course, <laughs> starting off in this dungeon, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to see both teams pull this kind of pack of two along with the pack of five on teaming, plus that mini boss right away. Pretty standard pull here. Now, very dangerous, of course. Want to make sure you're not in that shadow wave from that mini boss. It will likely one shot you, even on a non-fortified uh, non situation. Yeah, I mean, you're seeing right here, just, you know, what you're talking about, very standard, very full wave, uh, full of pulls here uh, on both sides. And you know, you're seeing uh, Friends Affix is, you know, just really, really working on the positioning here. You know, their, their Boomkin, their uh, Rusted Druid just running all over the place to make sure that they're standing, you know, out of the way of the Shadow Wave here. You know, so very, very good, good positioning on their part. So Affix is looking like they're getting just a little bit done, uh, a little bit quicker done uh, than Premonition is here. Yep, moving over to the next packs. Now, it's going to be really interesting because in some of the previous series that we saw in the finals on this dungeon with these Affixes, we saw a lot of different skip styles on these upcoming packs. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see if they use a mass stealth. Oh, actually, there are no rogues here. Uh, if they use any of their invis pots in the, some of these lower portions. We have the Hunter getting very low for Premonition, just barely heals up there. And now Friends with Affix is seeming to slow down their pulls. They probably used a lot of their resources and CDs on that previous pull. So just slowing things down, letting those come off cooldown. Premonition in the meantime, still cleaning up that mini boss in the bottom corner. That was the interesting thing about uh, Friends is that early on in the quarterfinals, I believe they were you know one of the only teams that were actually using invis pots a lot. And then we, kinda, we didn't really see that uh, going into the semifinals. Yeah, well, you never know. We'll see the Dread Hunter, of course, being pulled down here. He does patrol around that balcony area. It is very important to interrupt that AOE fear from them. Uh, of course, there's a lot of other casts going on from the other mobs as well. The Boomkins proving their worth here with that solar beam, too. Absolutely, and here you are. They are almost, I mean, Premonition's still working away on... <laughs> oh, actually, oh. E-Man getting knocked off. Okay. I mean, they were still working away at the mini boss and uh, still dealing with some of the trash and getting them knocked off. Uh, looks like the whole group's getting feared right here. Uh, Star is, you know, st struggling to stay on the up. And, and we're going to have some deaths for friends as well there, Jack. Uh, things are just getting really messy on both sides. Unfortunately, E-Man does indeed plummet to his death. Uh, I don't think that actually ended up resetting the pack as he didn't release and come back in right away. That was most unfortunate. Premonition, of course, moving ahead. Uh, looks like they're going to go for a double pack pull here with those two bats that just came down. Those do a very, very heavy frontal shadow cleave that does uh, punt, so you want to make sure that you're out of the range of those. And E-Man learned that firsthand. So Premonition, again, taking a very, very ambitious pull. You know, they're trying to waste no time at all. Uh, friends, of course, you know, had that near wipe uh, where they're just trying to catch up and trying to, you know, get their ground back together here. Uh, we do. Oh, I thought they were going to be uh, moving past that. Okay, so they do end up uh, pulling the next pack. So it looks like they're having a pretty clean pull through this. Uh, now, there, uh, there, there are a few different packs that they can, you know, dodge, pull, skip, etc. It looks like they're both teams so far, at least, are opting to kind of sweep this entire floor prior to going up to the first uh, boss. Um, I'm not really sure if they're going to pull the last pack at the end of the hall. That one is particularly daunting on teaming. There's a lot of extra mobs in there as well. I mean, you're seeing, you know, Premonition is nearing the stairs, so a tiny bit ahead of friends here, so it's just a very good job of just putting all the mobs in together here, getting the line of sight off, and then everyone is in, of course, the green bubble. Green bubble giving them uh, that increased haste, that increased DPS benefit there for them. Yeah, a lot of haste in there, 50% haste. Premonition just pulling the pen ultimate pull uh, to that mob, uh, that mob pack that I, we were referring to right before the stairs. We'll see if they end up pulling them or skipping them. Looks like they're kind of just chiseling through everything, so I will assume that they end up pulling them. We'll see in a moment here. They do pull them indeed, and after that, they can start going up the stairs to the first boss, Agronox. I mean, you're seeing here, it's just very nice where, how well Premonition is pacing themselves. You know, they're always working on chain pulling. They're not having to worry about, like, you know, rogue dropping a, a combat or anything like that to get out of it, to get out of combat re-stealth or anything like that. They're just going pole to pole and uh, doing a very good job here. There's quite a bit of healing going on that Zach needs to get everybody topped off for. So this is, you know, Sis going down there, just getting a little, little too low there, so he instantly releases and running back. But uh, this, this is what you have to be worrying about, especially as a healer, of being able to balance out, dealing the extra damage, and keeping people topped off. Yeah, there are a lot of frontal cleaves in this trash, too, with a pretty short cast time, including some frontal lines from some of the Blade Lords. So lots of extra damage that could go out on the melee, or even range that are too close by. Friends with Affixes does indeed opt to skip that quite dangerous pack. They will start heading up the stairs to the uh, Garden of Death area, <laughs> where Agronox resides with a lot of his little flower buddies. Yeah, but we saw. I mean, like you were talking about with Raider IO, uh, you know, yesterday we're having a little bit of problems, you know, with these early, with the early boss and with a lot of the trash packs leading up to it. So it'll be very interesting to see, you know, how these teams are preparing for it. And you know, of course, uh, friends with FX is, is looking to just skip past this Walker mob, getting everybody together, and then just running on through. Whereas uh, Premonition is clearing out the last of the trash before they're heading up to the top of the stairs. Yeah, so pretty typical that we do see uh, people wait for that patrol with the uh, Ent there. They will be pulling this first pack of flowers uh, combined with that Keeper. They have to be careful with that patrol in the back just in the bottom corner of your screen at home and they, they them. do end up pulling them so there's going to be a lot of silences needed on those to make sure none of them get uh dominate mind cast making sure that the uh keeper does not heal any of the flowers and that the flowers themselves don't reach some of these guys yeah feral is just feral dog is really really doing whatever he can to be getting a couple casts off he's had to kind of 
uh, pivot here and there, just reposition constantly, but now he's in a comfortable position. They really had a lot of damage here. Uh, I'm fired up was just absolutely just melting these mobs down. It made it a lot easier. Tons of damage coming in. So they are up in this garden area. They are now planting and making sure to get all of their spells off uh, in a row. Some of these mobs will cast some really heavy spells, as you can see right here on the Boomkin running away. You do have to kind of snap that vine to make sure it doesn't increase too much damage on you. After this, they'll have two more trash packs to deal with, and then we'll deal with Agronox himself. So the Boomkin has to run away from those vines to break the vines and not take damage. That's true. So he's not being a chicken. That That, that is accurate. <laughs> we'll have a talk after this. <laughs> <laughs> this next pack, of course, quite dangerous. Two of these flowers will go to the first uh, aggro target they pick up and explode, which is why the tank runs in there first in order to make sure that he eats that on oncoming AoE damage, after which, of course, they will deal with the residual flowers left over. They also opt to pull the kind of Ent on the side. That does have a bit of extra health. Not really mini-boss style, but definitely something to chew through for efficiency of cleave, of course. I mean, you're seeing it. They're just trying to make sure they're able to get it down quickly. Um, Premonition, of course, is getting, I believe it's both sides cleaned up here before they're pulling the boss, and, they're def and it's definitely showing us a little bit above mob count uh, for, as, according to Friends of Ethics. So my friends of Affixes should be cleaning up here. They will be pulling our next favorite tree boss, of course. They're sprucing up for the pull. They will be probably pulling I thought the these were over. <laughs> they will be probably pulling that. That's more tree bosses. They will be probably pulling the boss towards the back of the room, especially without that blood decay, to make sure that they, he, uh, they can deal properly with the flowers that he summons, especially because they might spawn some of those explosive orbs in the back. So you can see they already kind of pulled him towards the front. Not as much as I would have expected, so we're going to have to see how those flowers pan out for them. And you're seeing here, you know, Premonition is really taking his time and just doing all the trash possible here. I mean, I do wonder if they're worried about, like, pulling anything a little extra on the sides of the room or anything like that. But like you were talking about, there's really good angle here with friends, you know, how, they're, how easily they're able to take care of any of the blossoms as they are uh, spawning and able to just annihilate them so, so quickly. So, of course, those blossoms, much like the trash ones, will fix eight random players in the party, and should they reach them, they will explode for, uh, explode for a ton of damage. So you want to make sure you kill them, slow them, CC them. Uh, they don't want to reach those players. Agronox himself does have an increasing dot on the raid, so there's a bit of a soft enrage mechanic there. He will also pummel the tank for some very heavy damage, and of course, finally, he does spawn those succulent lashers under him, a second type of flower that deal very heavy tank damage and splash an AoE around them. I mean, you're seeing here, you know, um all the ads are coming out, and they're actually getting really, really close since you're looking at Vim, of course, he was getting the fixate on him, Feral also had another fixate that was getting really, really close, getting him into melee so they're able to be cleaved down, but they run very, very quickly, so it's, you know, very important as you see the, the slows going down, how quickly the uh, range are able to just, um, switch targets and focus them down really quickly. Premonition also catching up on Agronox. Of course, they did opt to kill that harder pack downstairs, so they are 12% on on trash time that they will be able to save later, which is why they're behind on Agronox a bit. The death differential is only two, nothing too big right now. Friends with Affixes should be killing off Agronox first. Nothing to pine about here. <laughs> Just when you think it's over. Premonition, of course, actually does look like they're catching up quite a bit more. Uh, they're dealing quite a bit more damage uh, than uh, Friends with Affixes. I mean, they pulled, I think, you know, 30, 40 percent faster, something like that, I want to say. I mean, they were already, like, halfway through the boss. Yeah, no, quite a lot of damage. Agronox does go down to the relief of the Friends with Affixes. They will be running up the stairwell in a moment, getting ready to start the trash towards Thrashbite, the second boss. Meanwhile, Premonition still chiseling away at Agronox. I mean, you're seeing away uh, as they're, you know, get, again, playing with the Stairmaster here. One of the biggest things I hate is just fighting on these stairs, especially in this instance. Yeah, it's, it is pretty rough. Uh, Agronox just about to hit sub 20%. I do think they've dealt with both of the flower packs at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. Friends with Affixes, of course, getting upstairs to the uh, all elusive imps that will deal a lot of firebolt damage on their primary target. Uh, Agronox being chopped down here by Premonition. They're getting ready to move out of the dungeon, uh, out of this area with him. They have, both teams do have now a checkpoint here should they wipe. Uh, it is quite punishing this dungeon uh, wiping. The runbacks are really brutal, so they have to be quite careful not to do that, especially because it is a race. Emango going so low at the very end there. I do like that they're pulling him towards the exit as we've spoken about a ton, Jack, and now they'll also be moving up to Thrash Bite's room. That's something that Premonition's always been doing really well so far, and that's one of the biggest things that, you know, you, it, it looks very small, you know, it doesn't look like it's very consequential, but, you know, every little bit helps here. I mean, even having the Druid roaring, getting them a little bit more movement speed here and there, you know, getting up there a little bit quicker, it just makes it so much nicer. And it'll be interesting to see how much they're going to be pulling with these impacts, or if they're just going to skip them completely, which looks like they're going to be doing. Yeah, so there are a lot, of, a lot of trash monsters, especially with teaming up here in Thrash Bites room. Some of the important ones, of course, being those imps. So you really do need impeccable timing <sighs> to make sure that you interrupt their firebolts that, unlike the ones in Arcway, do cast on their primary target. As long as the tank has a CD pop or some kind of CC or silence, they will not hurt him too much. Yep, and you're seeing, I mean, they even uh, get a good paralysis there on the book to make sure that they're not having to worry about the book cast, and that'll be something to kind of watch out for as they pull um, the next boss, as they pull Domitrax, you know, as 
any of the uh, books and stuff like that are the the um, shelves, of course. Sorry, the, many of the shelves are collapsing. Of course, you get, will be having to deal with any of the books there. So it'll be very interesting to see, you know, how well they'll be able to jump on top of the books, you know, get them closed shut and get all the interrupts out. Right, you are a premonition, of course, now having pulled the mini boss Gazer Axe up there, which does do a heavy AOE damage in front of the tank, but it is easily dodgeable. Most importantly, you do have to turn around for their AOE disorient, after which they will cast this Focus Destruction, dealing quite a bit of damage to the group, so the hero has to be ready for that. Something tough to look out for, Jack. It's not tough to look out for, you just gotta look away from it. Huh. <laughs> you see, you know, it definitely does look like Premonition is catching up here. Uh, as Friends of FX is, is, of course, clearing a lot more trash upstairs, you're seeing Premonition, who've already got, a, you know, much of the trash mob count that they really want, uh, are still actually pulling ahead. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how much they'll be able to skip later on here. not really sure how much more ahead they are right now. It's actually pretty even. We do have a death from I'm Fired Up right now. That's another five seconds on the clock. They do get that battle res up because we just we did just discuss how brutal the runbacks are in this dungeon. Thrashbite, of course, does spawn. He is quite impartial to books, saying that books are for losers. They will be pulling the boss here in a moment. Now, he does have, on average, lower health than some of the bosses you'd expect in a 17 fortified or not. Um, that's because of the high damage that he deals and because there's a kind of hard and... Uh, hard Hard-ish soft and rage on the fight in that he will pick players to charge and once he's out of bookshelves that they can hide behind there's four of them he will charge those players and likely one shot them I mean, it'd be looking at you know which classes he's gonna be targeting and how they'll be able to immune it because of course you'd like to all the all the shelves of course will spawn different books you'd prefer just not to spawn the books at all because you want to make sure that you know that's something that you don't have to worry about focusing you don't have to focus interrupt them you just keep on pouring more and more damage into the boss but if you don't have these immunities uh, you, you know of course you will have to knock over the bookcase so the Pulverizing Cudgel AoE does come out. It does deal damage to everyone in the room. However, if you are caught within that circle, you deal, you are dealt substantially more damage. Everyone does well move out of that. And of course, silences those books that come out. Uh, Premonition, in the meantime, slightly ahead on Thrash Fight. They should be downing him first, after which the door leading up to the third and fourth boss room will open. Of course, there's going to be a mass of tiny mobs, including imps, in the next room that with these affixes, we've seen how brutal it can be if they don't LOS them around the corner because about 15 of 20 of them end up running up the stairs and running away, while five of them are actually aggroed and you do DPS them. However, all 20 of them do spawn explosive orbs. And that's one big reason can. why... Can. Can, can. <laughs> that's one big reason why Premonition, of course, is line of sighting. You're seeing Friends of FX is doing the exact same thing. They're line of sighting, making sure if any of those orbs do spawn in that other room, they're line of sighting, so they're not going to be uh, getting taking any kind of damage from them. And they're really using this room to their advantage, you know, seeing any of the void zones that are popping up or anything like that, they're able to just gain a lot of space here and deal with the explosives as they come. Absolutely. It is absolutely imperative that they interrupt them, make sure that they kill those books off right away, that you saw some of the CC chains going out when those mobs were casting the books, and up the stairs premonition goes they're oh, they're quite good on percent right now they're going up to the spider area um, now there are a couple of spider mobs on either side of this bridge that they can opt to pull however with their percentage completion I think they're just kind of kind of run right through them and go to the main area yeah and I definitely think that was you know one of the big plans coming out and of course here you see you know Eman does roar getting all the mobs grouped up together here very and that's a big pull. It's a very big pull. So they're probably going to pop everything here. Of course, there are a lot of spider mobs involved here. You have to be careful for the webbing. It's a pretty sticky situation. The spider queen does port away, and once she does that, she will fire a very heavy damage frontal. As you can see, they're almost kill uh, Sistara. Does deal a very heavy frontal and summons three more spiders that deal a very heavy damage poison dot to the tank. I mean, you're seeing they did a very, very good job keeping Sistar up, keeping him from hugging that good old floor. And Friends of Affix is doing, you know, kind of a similar pull, but it's actually not getting as tightly packed in together, and it looks like we might be having some deaths here pretty soon. I mean, the Vim is dropping very, very low there. That orb. Uh, that orb. I know. Yeah, he's getting everybody topped off, but it was a very, very scary pull you know, right off the bat. So it does look like uh, Premonition is a little bit of an advantage here, getting uh, the mini boss down just a little bit quicker than Friends of And of course, the Spider Queen going down soon. She is quite cunning. You definitely don't want to be caught in her web of lies. They will be heading up the stairs in a moment to the uh, the boss room, where the third and fourth boss are located, Domitrax and Mephistroth, respectively. There is only one more trash pull between those two bosses. Of course, those four fell bats that come in, but you do not deal with those until you have killed Domitrax. Exactly right, and you're seeing, you know, uh, Premonition has a little bit of an advantage here, and of course, you know, the stakes could not be higher. The difference between the Raider IO and the MMT teams, you know, it could be quite a bit of money left on the line. Speaking of stakes, I'm quite hungry right now. So <laughs> I will be summoning this third boss in just a moment here. Now, very typical Fell Lord kind of thing here. Hits the tank very hard, has a frontal cleave. Of course, the main abilities are at 90 and 50%. He will summon two portals at 90%, the ones near the door, and at 50%, the ones away from the door that will constantly 
filter in mobs into the room until you destroy the portal guardians. Domatrax himself, of course, once he reaches 100 energy, will do a massive one-shot AoE in the room, and the only way to prevent that, Jack, is, of course, to go into the central Aegis area. And it's important not to sit inside the Aegis as, you know, for very long, because, of course, you know, the more that you sit in it, the more it diminishes in strength. So it's very much a dip in, get out as fast as you possibly can. You're seeing that actually the whole group is kind of positioning itself closer and closer to those portals, so that way they're able to get, you know, just a little bit of cleave here. Of course, here is the burst coming out uh, from the energies, and they dip into the Aegis, take the blast, and then dip right Still out. Still did quite a bit of damage, nonetheless. And of course, while you're in the Aegis, you don't want to park it, not only because it diminishes in size, but also I believe it decreases your damage and healing done by 75%, something pretty substantial. Now, the mobs coming out of the second set of portals at 50% here, these mistresses do an AoE world that will punt people away from their location. See, those are particularly dangerous because when combined with the boss's next AoE, if they're brought near the middle, they can actually knock all of the players out of the middle Aegis area, and it will take them ages to get back in, after which they will be one shot by the boss. Ages to get out of the Aegis? No. <laughs> Most excellent. And you're seeing here, Premonition, actually, Sistara is Oof. going down here. Very quick battle res coming back up. It's always important to note that that is their only battle res that they are able to have, so... And it's something that, you know, just as he's getting res, he's taking huge, huge hits here. And we're towards the end of the dungeon, too, so no, no more get-out-of-jail-free for them. The final portals and the mistresses do go down at this point. It is just tank and spank on this boss. They do, of course, have to be wary of his frontal cleave. Very easy for the tank to sidestep. I like how he's positioned near the middle so that you can get all that last bit of min-max damage prior to going in the portal. They likely will have one more chaotic energy. Uh, yep, yeah, there it is right now. Exactly right. And you're seeing, you know, it's very good positioning by E-Man, how he's been pivoting the boss around the room, how he's able to take advantage, you know, of just good positioning, being able to take care of these Shiva, the extra demons that are popping up, taking care of the portal guardians very quickly. You know, it's a very very, very good job on uh, Premonition's part. And, uh, of course, Friends with Affix is not far behind at all. It does say they have 97%. However, we do know that these four Dreadwing bats that are spawning currently for Premonition and Friends with Affixes will momentarily see do also give percent, so they will obtain that 100% prior to facing Mephistor off the last boss. Well, it's something that, you know, definitely shows the, di the discipline, the planning of them, where they, you know, they are always anticipating, you know, having the least amount of mobs pulled as possible, you know, least amount of risk and things like that. So, you know, Premonition's chewing through these guys as they, of course, are getting ready for the final this boss here. This is going to be a close one, but be, keep in mind, Friends does have two extra deaths, so they have another 10-second hurdle that they need to overcome. So they need to beat Premonition by a much uh, larger buffer than they would be on equal footing right now, and they're already a bit behind. They're still killing the bats as Mephistroth is currently spawning for Premonition. And then, of course, you do have to wait for a little bit of the RP that's coming out here uh, on Premonition's side, so Illidan will pour it up and start fighting some of the demons away and as you're able to engage with uh, Messerstroth here. So a couple of the mechanics here, of course, a two-phase fight. He does have a huge frontal on the tank, a cone frontal that you, does uh, place some uh, poop on the ground that you certainly don't want to be stepping in, so, and that will remain there for, uh, I think, about a minute or two. Um, also, players will be debuffed with some of these pillar spawns in those green circles. You want to move out of them to decrease the amount of damage they do to you. And lastly, he will splash dots randomly on the group, which can make healing quite tough on this fight. Yeah, healing for this fight is definitely, uh, I wouldn't say it's quite a struggle, but it's something that you always have to keep an eye on. You know, you're seeing right off the pull, Zach is dealing, you know, quite a bit of damage. Feral Dog, of course, is doing the exact same thing. You know, your healers do have that opening window where they're able to be dealing tons and tons of damage. But after that point, you have to be very, very careful because it really can ramp up quite a bit in terms of the total damage going out here. And of course, and as we entering the second phase. Yep, so right right on. So right as we hit 100 energy on Mephistroth, we will enter the second phase where typically the tank will pick up the Aegis buff, similar to how we saw with Skovald, and will be responsible for protecting Illidan from these Shadow Balls. Meanwhile, of course, of course, the DPS need to kill these manifestations of Mephistroth on the outside to make sure that there's not too many angles that the tank has to protect and it gets too out of hand. And of course, there is a ramping dot this whole time. And you're seeing here they're doing whatever they can to, you know, make sure they're blocking from the same directions every single time. E-Man doing a very, very good job of keeping an eye on them there as they're protecting Illidan, and they got out of it very quickly. It is important to note that if those orbs do hit Illidan, it actually extends that phase and extends the amount of time that you do not, uh, you are not able to connect and DPS Mephistroth, so a lot of the time lost there. Friends, of course, right back on the same phase one. They should both be able to finish the fight here in phase one, as it will take a while for the boss's energy to reach 100. Keeping in mind, Friends with Affixes is still two deaths above so they need to win this within with that 10 second buffer in mind as well they're kind of catching up on damage right now but they need to do a lot in order to win this map I mean, look like they're catching up on damage we also have to keep in mind well i guess both sides having their warriors there you know once you're entering in rage and or sorry once you're entering under 20 20 percent you're getting the execute extra damage there you know sistar will have a head start uh on top of friends there so it's be something to kind of keep in mind where 
It looks like it will be a little bit close, but again, that two death differential. It's going to be close, but I think Premonition's going to be able to somewhat comfortably take this one. I mean, it was a close, close race, but it looks like Premonition will seal the deal on that 1 0. Yeah, close match, as you said. And uh, coming into this, we've had questions all day about uh, Friends with Affixes, and I think right here they're proving their quality. I mean, they took Premonition to the limit, and it was essentially two deaths and maybe an extra four or five seconds of DPS on that boss that really separated them in that match. So uh, very tight. And I got to say, as much as we earlier in the day were questioning,